11, Dr Kennedy Graham. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the... Order! Order! Allow Dr Kennedy Graham to ask his question. My question is to the Minister for Climate Change Issues. Has he asked for any advice of the potential profit made by companies? Order! It would be reluctant to ask a member to leave the House at this stage of proceedings, but I have asked the House to give this member a fair crack at asking his question. If these interjections continue, then members will be leaving the chamber. I invite the member to restart his question. To the Minister for Climate Change Issues, has he asked for any advice of the potential profit made by companies which were given free New Zealand units under industrial allocations in the emissions trading scheme, submitting cheaper offshore units instead to meet their liabilities? If so, what was it? Uh, Mr Speaker. Honourable Tim Grosser. Uh, no, because unlike, uh, unlike non-industrial users of the ETS, participants of the ETS, the industrial uh, uh, participants in the ETS do not have the luxury of opting in and opting out and opting in again to the scheme. Yeah. Supplementary question, Dr Kennedy Graham. Is he aware that Methanex, which, for example, received an allocation of 300,000 NZUs in 2012, could have submitted cheaper international units instead of those NZUs, thereby profiting at the taxpayer's expense to the tune of $1 million. Uh, Mr. Speaker. Honourable Tim Grosser. Mr Speaker, this goes to the heart of the issue. The scheme is designed to allow participants in the scheme to minimise the cost of meeting their obligations. It is entirely possible that Methanex may have found a way to minimise their costs. From 2015, or rather from the end of May onwards, the situation will change when all participants will have to use New Zealand units. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Dr Kennedy Graham. When he said yesterday, in answer to a question, that he was, quote, happy with companies maximising their fiscal position under the ETS, was he talking about the possibility of New Zealand Steel making $3 million because his government refuses to stop the flow of cheap credits into New Zealand? Mr Speaker, Honourable this is essentially relitigating exactly the same point. The reality is that we expect companies to behave like rational economic actors if the way they can meet their obligations involves using certain types of units that meet the standards of environmental integrity we've set. That's exactly what we would expect to happen. Supplementary question, Dr yes, Kennedy Graham. Does he think New Zealand families will be equally happy as he is? that these big companies are profiting from their pollution by playing the market? Honourable Speaker, Tim Grosser. These companies are minimising their costs of meeting their obligations. There are still obligations they have to meet, and New Zealand will be better served by people who pursue low-cost abatement strategies. Question, oh, supplementary question, Moana Mackie. Supplementary to the Minister, does he appreciate that the only reason New Zealand met its international climate change obligations in the first commitment period of Kyoto was because of forestry? And if so, why is he unfairly targeting the post-1989 foresters whilst allowing everyone else to continue to engage in arbitrage with access to these cheap units? Mr Speaker, we're not unfairly targeting forestry. We were removing a privilege which only post-89 Kyoto forests had, and they were making money at the taxpayers' expense. And I think it's time the member started to think of the taxpayers she's meant to represent. Question no. Oh, further supplementary. Supplementary question, Moana Mackie. Supplementary to the Minister, in that case, why didn't he simply stop post-1989 foresters from being able to deregister and re-register in a single reporting period, which would have avoided capturing forest owners who entered the ETS in good faith, but now want to exit because the economics aren't there, who have no intention of re-registering to game the system? 
Honourable Tim Mr. Speaker, Mr Speaker, first of all, if forest, post-89 Kyoto foresters want to stay in the scheme, they can, until the end of the true-up period, or rather more precisely, until the end of May 2015, continue to use cheaper international units, if they wish, along with other participants. What we've stopped is a money-go-round that allowed them to make money at taxpayers' expense. Question number 12, Jackie Dean. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question